Welcome to this episode of the Smart Leader Sell Podcast. I'm Jessica Lorimer, sales coach and leadership expert, and I'm really excited to welcome the lovely Lucy to the show today. Welcome, welcome. Hello, thank you very much for having me. Well, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you here because you're somebody who's relatively new to my community. So it's quite rare that somebody who is like less than six months involved in, let's say, the cult of Jess that wants to come out and, and put themselves out onto a podcast. So I'm, I'm sort of like internally cheering, yay you, in a non-condescending way. But I'm also really excited about the episode that we're going to bring today. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I just thought when I joined your, uh, we were having a chat just a little bit earlier, weren't we? And I found yeah. you via one of Janet Murray's podcasts. And then I joined your group and I was reading your, uh, listening to your podcast and I just thought, yeah, this is, this is great. I could, I could get on there and Jessica give me some really, really good <laughs> advice. <laughs> it's good, so, isn't so it? Approachable, you know, you come across as such a nice, warm, approachable person. Normally, I would probably, I'd probably have a lot more fear of asking if I could come on. But I just thought, you know what? Jess seems really nice. I'm just going to put myself out there and say, do you know what? Can I come on the podcast? <laughs> and I really love it. So for all of you who don't, who haven't sent me an email, you probably don't know how terrible I am at responding to emails. So sometimes I'll have really busy weeks where I'm like with clients and I'm doing all these things. And I just don't get around to it. My lovely assistant, Beth, goes absolutely crazy because she's like, I've marked all these emails that you need to answer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it like on Friday or something. And so Lucy emailed me and sent me this lovely email, which I didn't get. The first one I, di- I didn't get, so that was fine. Well, not fine. Google Mail, not, not ideal. And then you messaged me on LinkedIn and said, I've sent you this email. And I was like, I haven't got it. And so you sent me it again, very kindly. And then you followed up perfectly. You were like, yeah, also, remember that email that I sent you? And it was really, really good. And I was like, that's amazing. And I felt, I was like, oh, crap, that's awful of me. I've completely forgotten to respond to this. And so it was just on one of those weeks where I had like three client intensives. And I was like, oh, and as soon as I got your email, I was like, of course I want Lucy on the podcast. Like, I should have answered this ages ago. <laughs> so well done for being brave and for following up perfectly. It was, it was like textbook. Perfect. I was really trying not to pester because I mean I know you probably don't think it's pestering because you would say it's a good follow-up exactly. but, yeah, I, um, I was like I don't want to pester but I just do want to check that she really- <laughs> the art of the follow-up demonstrated by Lucy oh, thank you. It was fantastic. <laughs> so tell everybody the formal bio of what you do and who you help well, I mean, some people call me the messaging magician. Oh, um, I love that. I just don't know whether to completely embrace it or not yet, so I'm testing oh. it now. <laughs> I, I help business owners and entrepreneurs who are great at what they do, but a bit rubbish at talking about it. So I help them find the, you know, the messages and the stories and the strategies to make them the obvious choice to their ideal clients. Mm-hmm. And my business is called Starting Conversations. So oh. I kind of help them start conversations about their business and really find those those messages that are going to resonate with their ideal clients. I love that. And I think it's, it's, so, it's so interesting because we all love what we do. And I found this when I started out in the online world, I wanted to tell everybody, like all of my friends were bored, witless, hearing about my business. They were just like, yeah, Jess, that's great. But also we were talking about sport or wine or anything else. And somehow <laughs> you've managed to turn it around to your business again. And I'd be like, but it's so great. And I'm so excited about it and all this kind of thing. But when it came to actually putting myself out there online and talking to other people about it, I was a bit like, oh, this is awkward. Because you you have that horrible feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're like, oh God, if I tell people I do, they might expect me to ask them to do things and then they might want to buy from me. And then Jesus Christ, I might have to have a conversation about them paying me. And ah, <laughs> so it happens to everyone, right? And I think we build up this process in our heads that, if we start telling people what we do, it's going to spiral out of control and tomorrow we will be Oprah or Ellen DeGeneres and, and suddenly it will be like paparazzi everywhere and oh my goodness, <laughs> expectations, perfectionism and all that stuff comes in. So I love that you're having conversations with people about how they can put themselves out there without worrying necessarily about all of the expectations that, let's face it, are completely unrealistic. I was never going to be Oprah overnight, but I did genuinely worry about it for a little while. <laughs> and I think you know it's it's just getting that clarity yes. on your message that's what then gives you the confidence to get mm-hmm. out there and talk about it and I think why people so many people hesitate is because they're just not really that clear or they they haven't got a clear enough message that they can just you know get off off pat yes. so that they can have the confidence to do it so whether that's they're being 
asked to introduce themselves in a Facebook group or a networking meeting, or it's the introductory text that they want on their website or their about page or whatever it is. If you are not clear on it and you're not clear on why people should choose you, then you do hesitate and you are nervous and you don't have the confidence. And it's, it's like a, you know, a vicious circle, really. You need to do that, that clarity work first, that pre-work, the stuff I call brand before logo. Um, I love that. (laughs) I love that. Because everyone thinks that their brand is about the font that they use or the images or whatever. And I'm like, it really is not. But that's, yeah. that's the last bit. That's when we start making it look pretty and nice. But the rest of it that comes beforehand is the hard work. Yeah, yeah. Because people, they set up a business. You'll, you will have seen this many more times than me, I guess. But people set up a business and they think, I know what I'll do. I'll get a logo and I'll get a website. <laughs> But then they, then they start to have a panic attack when it comes to, oh my God, but what am I going to put on it? What am I going to say? And it's like, yeah, just take a little step back. <laughs> you should have done first, the brand yeah. building bit. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because I think, I think you look at it and I remember I did exactly the same. I didn't have a logo, but I was like, oh, WordPress, I can, I can give this a go. I'll give it a crack. And I, I set it up. And I remember thinking when it came to my About Me page, I was like, well, what do people really need to know? And it, it was a real struggle for me. I was like, well, do they need to know I've got a dog? Do they, do they need to know how I got here? Like, what's the deal? And it wasn't until I started looking at other people's that I kind of realized, that, oh, actually, you know, there seems to be some kind of structure here. People seem to want to know this, this, and this. But when you start out, there are so many daunting things that you have to worry about. You really don't think about the most powerful thing, which is communication. Yeah. You know, how do you communicate that you're the best person for the job? And that is all to do with your message. You know, I think people worry, and and perhaps rightly so, about being judged, about being too polarizing, about being controversial, about imposter syndrome, what can they say, what can't they say? And I think there's inherently this stigma, especially when you come from the corporate world, that you have to be the same person there. And that's usually very vanilla, very bland, very diplomatic, can't say you know, can't lean too far on one side of the fence. And that really stops people. It holds them back. Yeah, it really does. I see that a lot with people I work with who come from corporate. Yeah. The whole transition that you have to go through in sort of mindset and in messaging, you know, when you've come from corporate, because it's just like a, you just feel like you've got to write formally and not conversationally. And the key is to write as you talk. So, yeah. It's It's, um, it's terrifying. I mean, I remember somebody saying to me once (laughs) when I just left corporate and I'd written a bunch of stuff and they were like, you talk like you have a stick shoved somewhere very uncomfortable. And I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I just spent a decade doing that. <laughs> and actually it's a very hard habit to break. And it, it is because, you know, when you are in the corporate world, you're protected ultimately by a brand and by a corporate message. So you don't really have to think that hard about what you want to say because you're going to tow the party line, whatever happens, right? Whereas yeah. when you come into the online world, suddenly it's you have to have your own opinions. And it's really hard to find out what those are when you've been doctored effectively for the last six, seven years into you will think this and you won't think that. And even if you do think it, you're not going to say it. So it becomes really hard to pick that out of people's, I guess, brains and, and put it onto paper. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, even, even because, you know, you need to put yourself into your brand, which, you know, you're not used to, which is what yeah. you're talking about. But also, it's just hard when you are you and you're so close to yourself and what you do mm. to find out what other people might really think makes you interesting. You know, it's, it's actually so, I, I struggle with this myself. You know, it's hard to do it for yourself. Um, but you know, I can do it for anybody else. You know, I can pick out somebody's unique selling point or help, you know, them work out their niche or figure out what those hidden stories are that really are going to resonate with their ideal clients. And I can help them do that. And I can point out to them what makes them interesting, what makes them different, why people should choose them. I, you know, but when it came to doing it for myself, I was like, Oh my God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Cause you're just so close to your business. You, well, yes. just, you need somebody else sometimes to, to be able to, help pick this stuff out your brain you do and I guess that leads us perfectly into how can I help pick stuff out of your brain today what what is it that we're deep diving into I'm excited (laughs) so yeah you you want to know my question I do yeah so it's I mean it's around what we've been talking about this is the pressure bit I'm like so when it comes to building a brand people often think about the logo and the look and feel Mm -hmm. but they don't always realize the need for or see the value in the messaging piece 
Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do you sell lots of something people don't always know they need or really see the value in? I think it's a really interesting question because in all honesty, it's something that every single person I've ever spoken to in every industry has said, but people don't know that they need me. And I'm like, yeah, it's weird that, isn't it? We never know what we need. As consumers, we don't know what we need a lot of the time. And that's the job that the best brands undertake really, really well. For example, if we look at a company like Apple, did I ever know I needed to be a hipster with a really thin laptop that I could carry around that was branded so that people would know that I am a hipster? I didn't. I never knew that. But Apple's positioning, the way that they positioned it and the way that they educated me around, if you have a PC, you are a standard person. You are not creative. You are not innovative. You're not a free thinker like us people at Apple. The way that they positioned it made me, I, was, I could never go back to using a PC ever because suddenly I was an entrepreneur and entrepreneurs do not have PCs. We have Macs. <laughs> Everyone's going to be listening to this like, Jess, I have a PC. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm going to be like, I, I, still have, I still haven't invested in a Mac. I, yeah. I can't quite make the transition because I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I going to adapt yeah. you know, all new tricks, all the different place, ways to use it? <laughs> it did take me about three weeks to learn how to yeah. use it. And in all honesty, I do Google a lot. How do I do like copy and paste on a Mac? Or where do I find the at button on a Mac? So there are those, those little quirks, but it, it's that kind of thing around positioning and education for your audience. And I think this is the thing that entrepreneurs come up against an awful lot is that they don't really know how to educate their audience without constantly giving them the how to. So how to write your message, how to learn how to sell, how to do X, Y, Z. And that's not really the content that people need to educate them because education is about why. And we need to step back and think critically about, well, why do people need to know that their messaging is so important? Mm. Why do people need to understand that actually sales funnels are integral when you scale, but not at the beginning, you know, and that's the kind of reframe we need to look at. So for you, it's more around looking at why are people not considering messaging as being the first point of call when they start a new brand? You know, why, why are they not immediately going, yeah, of course I need to be able to communicate what I do effectively to the people who are going to be my ideal clients. Why do they not think that right now? Yeah. And you know, they probably because they just really haven't thought about it in enough detail, you know, just at all the whole business. A lot of the time when people set up a business, they think, you know, they, they start off with the whole marketing to everyone thing, don't they? <laughs> so, you know, they don't want to position themselves to certain ideal clients because they think, oh, I'm limiting my options. But actually, when you niche down, you realize that actually that helps you more. And I think everybody probably has to go through this pain barrier of going, I can probably cobble that together myself. I'll write my own words. I know what I'm doing. It'll be all right. And then when it, you get tumbleweed and they're sort of struggling about six months later, that's when they start to realize. And that's, that's what I find with a lot of the people that I work with, not all of them, but with, with a lot of people that I work with is they've got stuck. They've started and got stuck and they ha haven't quite realized why. And it just mm -hmm. takes them a while to suddenly go, oh, maybe it's because I'm not communicating well about why people need me. Exactly. And that really is where they need to be seeing your content, educating them on why your message is so important. And I'd probably do case studies on not on necessarily like your clients and because that can be quite a difficult one to quantify. So and so wrote their about me page and suddenly they got 10 new clients is not necessarily what they're looking for. But showing them interesting case studies, a bit like Apple in the market, how Apple have positioned them and their messaging means that they attract their ideal clients without even trying because people want to buy into it. They want to be the kind of person that buys Apple or buys PC or buys Louis Vuitton or whatever it is. And so that's what your audience need to be seeing. They need to be educated around why it's important and what it's going to do for them. Because I think a lot of people also get stuck in this trap where they go, oh, well, messaging's boring. It's just like, who are you? And, you know, what's your story? And actually, that's not it. You know, messaging is about the stand that your brand takes on specific issues it's about where you position yourself in the market it's about how you educate your own audience it's about how you sell to them but people don't see that because nobody's telling them yeah yeah and the other thing is it sort of picks up on some of the stuff you were talking to Naomi about on yes the podcast is you know it's the creativity side of it that people perhaps mm -hmm. don't value so much 
Yeah. So, you know, again, you're, you're trying to sell the fact that you can help somebody communicate better and you can help create a brand and create messages with them. And if it's not a physical product like Apple mm. has, you know, it, it's a bit harder, you know, for like coaches and consultants and that sort of thing to but really think about, value. Them. But it's so crucial for them, of course. But think about what you're saying there. You're saying, okay, well, you know, I'm selling, creating the brand messages and creating these things. Think about the people who are reading it. Does that sound sexy? Does it sound like something that's going to help them make money? Does it sound like it's going to help them create and cultivate a tribe of raving fans? No, but that's what it will do. So what you're selling them is the stuff that they need. You're yeah. not selling them what they want. And what you need to be saying is, hey, look, without a message, without a clear, strong message, you will never create a, a tribe of raving fans because they'll never hear you. They'll never see you. They will never, ever think, oh, my God, I have to be part of, <laughs> and I, like I said to you earlier, the Jess cult or the Lucy cult or the whoever cult, right? They're not going to ever think that because they don't know about you. Because whenever you position yourself, you're positioning yourself as somebody that they go, meh, maybe. And you, you never, ever set out to be a maybe. And that's what it's doing. When they're not investing in things, it doesn't, I always say to people, you know, I can't guarantee people results. You know, I can give them all the sales strategies in the world. If they don't execute, nothing I can do about that. You know, equally, a sales strategy that works really well for one person may not work as well for somebody else. Mm. There are no guarantees. It's not tangible in terms of, yes, people can make money, but at the point of discovery call, at the point of my own message in the market, at the point of talking to people, I still can't say, yes, you can take this one strategy that I have and you're going to be able to make a million dollars because I don't know that they will. I don't know if they're the right person to make it work. I don't know that they'll take action. I don't know all of these things. There's just too many variables in place. However, the message that I'm really confident in is that sales is simple and that there is a style for everybody. Yeah. And so whenever I'm positioning myself in the market, it is, even if you think you're terrible at selling, there will be a style that works for you. You've just got to find it. Does that make sense? So yeah. what I'm appealing to is the part of that person's brain that's saying, I want to be able to find something that works for me, but I don't think I can. What you're appealing to is, I want to be able to create a, a tribe of raving fans. I want people to really love reading my email newsletters and buy everything that I put out there because they just resonate so strongly with me. What you're saying is, hey, it's kind of like the corporate stick up the proverbial that we were talking about earlier, right? What you're saying is, here's how we can create a brand message. Here's how we can look at your overall messaging strategy. And people are like, yeah, but why? What does that do for me? But it's one of those things. So that's what you've got to be thinking about is always the what do they want and appealing to that because yeah. People want to invest in things that are going to make their businesses better. People, yeah. you know, want to invest in business. They want to invest in health. They want to invest in relationships. They want to invest in less stress. Like people want to invest in everything. They don't know until you tell them that you are the best investment they could be making right now. Yeah. And I, I mean, I do try to do that, but I need to do more of it and I need to get more visibility with it. That's for sure. And actually I did have one of these, 4am moments the other day where I was like, do you know what? Am I selling people what they want and giving them what they need? Because that's really what I need to be doing. And yeah. I need to be thinking, what is it that they are thinking? Because I was thinking I'm going to have to rebrand my entire messaging made easy program. This was me at four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, so I created a program called messaging made easy because I thought, well, that's just what it says on the tin, doesn't it? I mean, that makes sense. And then I was like, hang on a minute. I'm not taking my own advice here because no one's going to be Googling, I know what I need. I need messaging. <laughs> they're going to be thinking, you know, they're just going to be thinking completely different things. So they're going to be thinking, I want to get clients or they're going to be thinking, you know, oh, I don't Google. want to have an embarrassing website. I actually need to have a decent message on there so that people, you know, get to know, like, and trust me and all of this stuff. So I, I, it's, it's that going back to that thing about when you're in your own business, sometimes it's really hard to see it. Yeah. And it's, it just takes other people sometimes to go, yeah, this is what you need to do. And you're, oh yeah, why, why didn't I tell myself that? Yeah, so, I, I think a hundred percent. What I'd probably do is go out to your audience and say, okay, look, when it comes to your message, what's the biggest thing that you think it does for you? 
And you can have options like, you know, create your tribe of people who always want to buy for you, from you, like diehard raving fans who are going to be at every event you put on, who are going to buy every single thing you put out, who are going to support you 100%. You know, does it create clients? Does it create a decent marketing strategy? Does it, you know, build your brand? Does it give you more credibility in the market? Give them all those things and see what people tick most. Mm. And then start using those because it could be your clients are like, well, actually, you know, messaging to me means marketing. Lots of people will go, oh yeah, well, you know, messaging is marketing. It's not, but to them it is because it's like, oh, well, it's how we're putting ourselves out there. It's how we're getting visible. Mm. You know, some people will see messaging as being, okay, that's how I'm going to write a guest blog. So why do I need it? Or if you're like me, I always thought messaging is your about me page. And I know enough about me. Why would I need somebody else to tell me how to write about myself? I know myself, right? So start looking at what they're coming back to you with and then use that as your point of education. Okay, great. So actually it turns out that we're using messaging, which is a big, I mean, it's like sales, very big blue sky term can cover hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things. And so it makes it really difficult for people to understand why they in their current situation need it. So if you can attach it to a, an outcome, okay, if you don't have a core message, how will you ever be a big brand? Well, that makes sense. Yeah. If you don't have a core message, how will you get clients? Hmm, that makes sense. If you don't have a core message, how are you going to create a community? Yeah. And how are you going to start conversations about your business? Because exactly. It's stuck. You know, exactly. waffling on <laughs> without a clear message. Well, this is it. There are only so many times you can do that. I help X yeah. do X so that they can X, right? That's fine as an elevator pitch. It's fine when you go to a networking event. You can't have it on every single social media platform and on your website and hope that that alone is going to get you clients because mm. it mm. might. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like your market research idea. It's, you know, and that's, that's what I need to do more of actually is, is going out to more of these people and saying, what does it mean to you? Yeah. What is it that you're actually, what is it that you actually want? Because this can help you do that. You just might not have realized. <laughs> this is the thing. And the other thing that I'd be looking at is who are your ideal clients? Because if your ideal clients are people who don't currently know and understand the value of messaging, it's going to be a lot harder to sell to them. You have to do a lot more education. Whereas if your ideal clients are people who've perhaps already had their business for a year, 18 months and are now pivoting and recognize actually shit, my business is changing. Yeah. And I don't know how to communicate that right now. That might be an easier ideal client. They understand yeah, absolutely. Yeah. the power of messaging. They've made it work for themselves to that point. So actually when it comes to investing, they're like, yeah, okay, I get it. That makes sense to me. Yeah, because brands do evolve, you know, all yeah. the time. And you, knew, you do need to look at your messaging and refresh your messaging because not only does your brand evolve and your business evolve, but you do too. And sometimes things you yeah. might have said a couple of years ago, you know, they, they don't sit right with you anymore because you've grown yeah. up or whatever, you know? So, yeah, no, I, I agree, actually, because when I first started out, I thought, oh, well, all the startups are going to need this, you know, because of course they're going to need it. And then I thought, but actually, no, the startups pretty much haven't got any money, so they're no good. Let's not, let's not make them my ideal clients. So, so then I was, I was thinking, okay, so it needs to be people who've been in business for a year or two and who potentially have got stuck because yeah. they've now realized the value of messaging. That's they're the kind of people that I need to find. And then, like you say as well, it's the pivoting people. It's the people who are either personal brand or are slightly changing their offer yeah. and, and need to be able to get that yeah. out there. It's also the people who want to scale. Like, I think we forget the power of scaling, you know, and I don't think, I don't think my brand three years ago could have taken me to being a, an international brand. I don't think it could take me to being a global brand. I don't think my brand message probably nine months ago could have done it. So I think we are constantly evolving and changing, but we're also scaling. And somebody who is starting as, like I did three and a half years ago, I didn't know what to call my business. So I was just like, well, I'll just give it my name because that's my name and, and that's cool. You know, it, it was because I didn't want to think about, well, do, do I really want my business to be the next Nike? Mm. Do I really want to be the next Louis Vuitton? Do I really want to have something that's going to leave a legacy? 
maybe that's your thing. Maybe you go for the legacy builders, the people who are like, actually, do you know what? I'm not, I don't just want to sit here every day and play small. Yeah. I want to build something that's going to last and outlast me and that's going to have a bigger purpose. You know, that's the sort of thing that really people do understand then crafting a message is a really important part of that business because that's the bit that lives when you might not be there controlling it anymore. Yeah. Do you know, and I really hadn't thought about the, the scaling legacy builder people. So that's a great gem that I need yeah. to take away and give some <laughs> Get those people. Do they, you know, when you really are going to have to evolve your messaging at that point alongside yeah you know, your offer, because this is where it all comes from. You know, it comes yeah. from understanding your, you know, your business offer as well as, as everything else. So, yeah. And you have to think about it. There are so many people who are not accidentally successful, but they'll get to six figures and they're like, oh, okay, cool. Now what? Like, how do I make this a brand that isn't just my face? How do I take that to the next level? Yeah. That's actually very difficult for people. Because, you know, getting to six figures is actually fairly easy. You know, you, you sell stuff, you can, you know, do whatever you want, really. It's time and energy that goes in, sure. And you make some investments. But actually, when you're trying to scale past that point, it becomes, how do I make this a viable brand? Mm. How do I make it a brand that other brands want to align with? You know, how do I get to a point where, if, if you're a coach or a consultant, where the big names are asking me to be on their summits or asking me to affiliate for their programs. How do I do that? How do I get the joint ventures in? How do I position myself as somebody that's worth knowing? I mean, if you look at the big people out there, somebody like Selena Sue is really, really well known for being the best kept secret, right? I mean, in all honesty, she's obviously the worst kept secret because she's everywhere. Everyone knows who she is, but it's that kind of thing. That's how she's built her brand and scaled it, being I'm the best kept secret behind people like Daniel Poor, Marie Folio, those kinds of people. Yeah. If you look at somebody else, like let's say Tony Robbins, recent scandal apart, you know, his brand did not start at the same place that it was today. You, no. you know, he started selling door to door and going around and as, as a relatively poverty stricken teen doing all this kind of stuff. Now he's a multimillionaire. He's chilling out with Oprah, all this kind of thing. Yeah. And his brand, the brand of his business is not, or the message behind his business is not, I'm Tony, 20 year old who has to go out and, and knock doors every day. There's a whole team aspect behind it. There's a whole momentum and, and kind of movement behind what he's doing. And people don't get that without a message. So when you're trying to sell them something, I would stop focusing on the people who don't understand messaging and who don't understand the power of it. Because quite frankly, if they don't now, give them six months and they will, and they'll come back and it'll be much easier. You know? and, and instead, focus on people who want to create movements. Focus on people who want to scale up. Focus on people who want to leave a legacy. Focus on people who actually understand the impact that effective communication has on their business, on their bottom line, on their clients. Yeah. Yeah. Genius stuff. I'm just writing it down. So I don't, <laughs> yeah. I'll be having to come back and listen to this podcast again. Going, what was it that she said? Yes. Yeah, so I must, I must put, alter my strategy. <laughs> and talking of um, scaling. Yes. So, you know, at the minute mm -hmm. I mostly work one-to-one -one with people because you know, I really do have to get to know them and their business yeah, of course. and all of that stuff in order to help pull out these gems and, and help them write the stuff and, you know, help them build their brand. But how would you go about scaling doing something like what I do? So actually it's, and people ask me this a lot and I say it's about process. With every client, every client's different, but I always say that I have a five-step process. If somebody came to me having never sold a thing before and wanted to get to the point where they were doing automated sales funnels, hiring a team, there are five, five different stages that they'd have to go through. They have to go through clarity. They have to understand who they're selling to and what they're selling. Then they have to understand offer creation, you know, and how to create an offer that actually matches what their audience needs. Then they have to understand messaging and positioning themselves in the market, getting visible. Then they have to understand effective lead generation and sales techniques, you know, how they're actually going to close this clients. And then finally, they have to understand automation and delegation. How are they going to automate their business? Who are they going to be able to help hire to do that? You know, how are they going to make that possible? 
within those things, there are about a million different little bits that people can cover. You know, in sales alone, you've got sales conversations, handling objections, email marketing, pitching on webinars, pitching wherever. But the point is there's a clear process. And so I use that process as the basis for everything else. So if I run a group program, for example, like cash creation, which is focused totally on how much money can people make in a short period of time as easily as possible, then we look at the process of that and I go, okay, well, what do they actually need to do to do that? And which stage is it in my process that they need to learn? So obviously it's about sales and so it's generally sales and messaging that comes up during cash creation. That's what we teach and we pick out the little bits. And so there's a separate process only for cash creation that everyone goes through. So yes, it's more generalist, but it's not that you're not giving people, it's not that you're not giving them the right strategy. It's just that you're putting it into a framework that they can understand that everyone can go through to get to the same points. It's always going to take some people longer and things, but you see the thing, the thing I, this is probably a mindset thing I bother about, but you know, so I've created this formula that I know that I work with one-to-one with people that mm-hmm. I helps bring out the messaging and we work through all of this stuff. But I know that if I give that to somebody and they don't have my personal help in, in, in working it out, mm-hmm. they don't get the results that they, you know, that I want yeah. them to get. And so I kind of don't, I think I shy away from trying to do some kind of automated self-service stuff because... Mm-hmm. I think, well, it's not going to work properly for them. They're not going to really get what I'm promising they can get from doing this because unless they've got my brain helping them, how are they going to solve the problem? So there are two ways of looking at this. One is, okay, in that case, your formula may not work because your formula, if the person is driven and the person is motivated and the person is intelligent, then they should be able to get the results with the formula without your brain. So if it's that your brain is the integral part, you, your formula isn't generic enough for them to make it work and the process isn't it is potentially too large to make it work so perhaps you're trying to cover too much in one program rather than breaking it down and going okay i'm going to run a group program for example on the messaging in webinars and how to structure a webinar and what the messages are and how to use case studies appropriately testimony all that kind of thing mm. so Perhaps it's not specific. And if you're trying to cover something that's super broad and you're trying to take that person from point A, so don't have a message, no idea what I'm doing, to have a message that's really clear, strong, and get me clients, you can't do that. It's it's very rare that you could do it in 12 weeks one-to-one with somebody or even a year one-to-one with somebody, let alone try and put them through a group program that they have to be self-motivated and study alone. Yeah, this is why I don't see how I can scale it because when I do work with people it's 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 me really helping them get that clarity i help build the message i help write stuff for them right Um, so when you're selling a group program you have to be specific around what can i actually cover in this group program where people are going to get results and that may mean that you have to specify if you do this program you must already have clarity you must already know who you want to talk to and what you want to sell to them and that might be your guide point you know that's all you need to know to get through the program and then figure out how you can make your group programs more specific and cover information that is tailored to them or that they can make tailored, you know, so you have the worksheets that are designed to guide them through those parts of the process so they can figure it out. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Because yeah, half of the work that I do is helping them get that clarity in the first place. So (laughs) if they've got that clarity and they know what it is that they're selling and who to, that is half of the problem solved already. Exactly. And that's where you want to go with self-service. Like the whole thing about self-service is you've got to take them from a point that you know, after that springboard, it is just a case of going through the steps Mm. rather than I'm going to try and help, you know, people who want champagne on a beer budget because you can't convert a one-to-one program into a group program. It just doesn't work because so much, like you say, of your brain is in it. Do you know what I'm laughing at now? You won't believe this now. We've had no luck with, with background noise. The window cleaner now has turned up. <laughs> no window cleaning. All the windows in my office. <laughs> That's really good. Oh my God, it's the window cleaner. I can't believe literally all this stuff has happened within this short time we've been talking. <laughs> I kind of hope that the window cleaner looks like the guy from the Coke adverts, you know, in the <laughs> early 90s. <laughs> Well, where can people find you? Because I, I think the messaging is one of those things that everyone does get stuck with. Nobody really knows how to pull their brand out, how to pull their own messaging out. So where can they find you? 
They can find me on my website, which is www.startingconversations.co.uk. And they can also find me if they want to come and chat to me. I have a Facebook group called the Business Owners Conversation Club. I love that. I love that title as well. That's really, really cool. I may have to join. Right. Well, if you have enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you go and check out Lucy's website, check out her Facebook group. Messaging really is an important part of your marketing strategy and your sales strategy. So if you are struggling in these areas, make sure you go and check out her free resources. Make sure you go and check her out and, you know, ask her some questions, some some tough ones around how to build. Conversations. Yeah, (laughs) start some conversations, people. Make sure you leave us a little review and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. And I will see you on Monday with another training. 